So I think it's about time we start styling this project. There are a plethora of ways to do that in the front end world nowadays, but we're gonna start off with just the tried and true CSS, and then we'll dabble a little bit into some SAS as well. Uh, and then in the next videos, we'll dive into some of the more uh, modern, interesting ways to tackle this problem at scale. But let's stick to the basics right now and get right to that. To start off, uh, you'll notice that we had this kind of like double title effect going on. Let's fix that real quick. We were uh, grabbing the front matter title and front matter description in our markdown template. And so back here, um, I already had the title and then this H3. And really all I want is just to kind of show um, this image first and then just go into the rest of the content. So all I need to do is change that. And there you go. Now we've got that taken care of. That's the first problem out of the way. And actually, before we start styling, I think we should add a little bit more content um, so that we kind of, you know, have something a little more bloggy uh, to be looking at. So in order to do that, I think what I'll do here is I'm uh, going to change this title to be a little bit longer. Let's say, would you look at that? And then the description will just be would you just look at it? I think that's going to be lots of fun. And the right length. And then we're going to get some, some Ipsums somewhere. So we'll just do, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm all about that cheese Ipsum. Let's do that today. Okay, I'm just trying to generate some cheese here. Um, you know, I, I do like starting off with that, but let's not this time. Copy that. Uh, and then come back over to our code get rid of all of this and see how that looks real quick. Yeah, there we go. We're getting there. And then I probably have to like the second paragraph or so I'm going to put a title, uh, another, let's do an H2 and, uh, we're going to put, uh, you know, no one has as many friends as the man with many cheeses. A truism. If I've ever heard it, let's do the period off that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Time for the styles. Okay, so it's pretty common practice to, in your source folder, make a styles uh, folder. You can do it in assets or wherever you like. It's it's arbitrary. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then what we're going to do is the, the standard convention of global.css. Okay. And um, let's just start off making sure it works. You know, I always like to do background you know, I bleed red. I wish that was a real one, but uh, we'll do that. And, you know, it's not going to do anything, right? Because we haven't imported it or anything like that. And so what we're going to need to do is um, we're going to create a new file called Gatsby Browser. And if you aren't familiar with Gatsby Browser, this is an interesting file. It does often come along with a lot of the starters. And um, all you need to know about it for now is that it is going to run um, client side only as opposed to um, you know the Gatsby SSR, which would be server side rendered. Okay, so in this, what we need to do is we can do import, and then we can point at our uh, source styles. Oops, or not a type, uh, and then global. Where's my completion? Bucko, CSS. Okay, let's see if I did that right. And um, because this is a Gatsby browser, you actually need to uh, restart the server um, whenever you do browser or SSR typically. Okay, and then as soon as that completes, we should have a red background unless I, uh, I did something silly, which is wouldn't be surprising. Hmm, did I do something silly? No, I didn't, I just, did, I just had to reload, okay. And, ow, yeah, that hurts. Okay, so. Um, let's, <laughs> now that we know that that's working, it's very obvious. Let's change that to something. Hmm. What am I feeling here? You know, I'm feeling kind of like an antique look, I think. Uh, you know, there's always a tried and true peach puff, a favorite of mine. Let's do old lace. I think that's going to look nice here. Okay. So, uh, I'm just going to do some standard, you know, I'm going to set margin zero, padding zero. Um, color, let's start with saddle brown. 
to go to to complement that old lace. And then we'll just do like font family sans serif. And let's see where we're at right here. Okay, we're we're getting there. Not quite what I want, but uh, here you go. You have a, a CSS file working and uh, you just import it in the browser. And let's actually see what that looks like right here. So now that we have some basic style set up, uh, you wanna come back here and say, okay, well, we could look in, there's a few places we could look. We could look in the network tab and look for everything that loads here. Um, there's gonna be quite a bit of things and in development mode, it's a little bit different than um, the uh, serve method. But what we're looking for here is a style sheet. And here you can see this, this blob right here. And then it's got this little hash at the end. And we're gonna double click that. And there you go. Check that out. Polish, huh? Interesting. Uh, we've got uh, all of our styles right there. And so that's, we don't need you anymore, cheese. And also if you go to inspect it, uh, you're gonna find it in the head by default here by doing it this way. So there's text style sheet and you've got the same link there. So yeah, that's the gist of how it's gonna work and how it's gonna load. And it's just gonna put it right in the head file, okay? Um, pretty, pretty standard, nothing crazy. So let's do, let's make this look a little bit better real quick before we move on. And in fact, um, before we do that, let's show how to do some SAS. So we'll do SAS Gatsby. Um, there's some plugins that you can do. There's, you, you could configure it in the um, Webpack itself, but um, I'll show you before I set this up, but you're gonna want this Node SAS and Gatsby plugin SAS. So let me show you this real quick. Uh, if I were to shut down the server and then pop over to my code, and I'm just gonna change this to a SCSS file, you know, if you're into that. And um, then in Gatsby browser, I'm gonna change this import to SCSS. And then uh, when I run uh, yarn develop, or which just runs Gatsby develop, as you can see, uh, you should get a compilation error here. Probably an unexpected token or something, if I remember right. Yep. Um, look at that memory. Okay, so... Yeah, failed to build, generating development. I swear we usually get a better error than, than this for this type of stuff, though. Maybe only on the page. Let's try and reload and see what happens. Nah. Oh, yeah, there's your token. Okay. Well... Let's show you how to get around that. So if you now do yarn add, and we'll pop in that node SAS and Gatsby plugin SAS, that's where you want to start. And then pretty simple after that, uh, you just go over to your code here and in your Gatsby config, just like every other plugin, you can just drop this in. I don't think the location matters. I'm not sure. We'll do Gatsby uh, plugin SAS, right? My, what a, what a terrible memory. We just had a good memory and then we have a bad memory now. Yarn develop. And we just want to make sure that that works. Ooh, Gatsby plugin SAS is not a function. Mm hmm. What do you mean it's not a function? Did I try to use it as a function? I don't believe I did. Oh, I don't know how that happened. Okay, <laughs> interesting feedback. Not a function, huh? Give that a moment and pop over here and reload and we should be back in business. Yes, we are. Okay, perfect. So don't worry, we're going to improve this, but I kind of want to do it in a, in a sassy way. So uh, let's do, we'll come back over to our code and um, we're gonna go into our global SAS. And then just to show that that's actually working, we will do, uh, let's actually make a container to show how to kind of use classes. I mean, it's, it's pretty standard. Um, so this container is gonna wrap my whole markdown. Um, and in the next video, we'll probably get into like a layout component or something like that. But for now, we're gonna keep it pretty pretty simple here. So I'll just say, uh, you know, um, can I do M0A? Is that autocomplete? No, I know, I swear there's one for that, but margin zero auto. Um, and then we want to say, uh, I want probably padding 20, um, but we don't want any on the top. And uh, then we will say the width of this is going to be 100%. Whoa, how'd that happen? Uh, then the max width, uh, I think we'll 
go with 640 pixels for a pretty good read width. Um, FC 18 for the font size, just bump that up a tiny bit. And I'm gonna get crazy here and do 1.3 line height, non-even numbers, because I'm a rebel. And now for SAS, let's say that um, we're gonna only style the H1 differently. How, and uh, we'll do uh, 38, 38 pixels. And then uh, text transform uppercase. And let's go with that just for now. Um, is our SAS actually working? Does not look, oh wait, well, duh, Jimmy, you didn't add your container yet. So here we'll do class name equals a container. And that should fix that. Oh, boom, look at that, sweet. Now, um, you know, I, I kind of like the saddle brown here, but I'm not as big into the rest of it. So I think what we'll do here is we'll say, uh, my H1, I want to remain color saddle brown. And um, let's actually do, oh, designers are gonna hate you when you do this. I'm messing with the letter spacing here. Just kind of give it a little bit, little bit more spacing there. Yeah. And um, then, I think what we'll do here is we'll say, let's set the body color to, let's have a base of chocolate. Now this is gonna be alarming. Uh, you know, Don't hate me just yet. And we're gonna inspect that. And we're going to take a look at that uh, color here. And then we're just gonna kind of drag this around. Now the trick here is to get it to where, you know, you can get kind of a nice like desaturated look here, but that's not very readable. And you'll see there's this contrast ratio down here you should keep your eye on. Um, you know, you should use your, your good judgment, but use this as a backup. So here we can go, okay, we're, uh, this will be uh, passing triple A here, okay? So that, that would put me right there. And yeah, I kind of like that. You know, I'm more of a fan of kind of like subtle, but you know, we want to be accessible. So let's go with that. Maybe a little bit darker. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll just uh, copy that. Come back into our code. Paste it there. I hate when it does that weird color swatch thing and moves you around. It's very strange. Um, and then I think, actually, you know what else we need to do is um, we need to do a uh, HTML box sizing border box. Just because I don't... When I'm doing that 640 pixels and I have this padding here, I want that to actually be the case. And the reason I've done that um, padding in general is just so that when we're on a small device, um, that should have... Oh, you know what? Um, do we... I always forget how to do this. It's... Uh, what's the good box sizing reset? You can usually search this. Uh, yeah, CSS tricks usually won't let you down here. Is this the one? Is it the one vendor prefixes, known issues? I think this is the one I'm thinking of. No, I don't I don't want these vendor prefixes. I just don't. Universal box sizing with inheritance. Yes, this is what I was thinking of. This okay, I just I'm just dumb and I missed it. Uh this gives you more flexibility than its predecessors. Yes. That's what we want. And I want to do that. Whoa. Whoa there my friend. Now, did you really just drop my clipboard like that? Did you really? Bim, bim, bim. That's really Vim in VS Code. Okay, uh, so we've got that, got that. Um, got our margin zero, padding zero. Yeah, I think that should do us pretty well. Now, if we come back over to here and we were, I didn't want to click that, but yes, it is a beautiful picture. Um, if we go to mobile here, we should see that we have some nice padding. Um, that's pretty what we're going for. We should lower the size of this stuff with media queries, but we're not gonna get that crazy. Um, we're, we're about done wrapping up here, but what we do need is a nice font. So we'll go Google fonts, come over here, and you know what's popping right now? It's poppins, that's what's popping. And well, this is different. Download. Usually it is a download button. Okay, well I didn't I didn't actually want that download. Okay. What's this? 
Okay. Um, let's pick some styles, actually. So let's do, let's say that we want to do our normal. We'll do, uh, we want regular. We want italic. Oh, look. Embed. Okay. You guys have made this UI very confusing. It was already not great. Okay. And I'm going to do this through a CSS import since we're doing CSS right now. So I can just copy that and go back over to my code, go to the top of this, drop that in there, uh, come back over to here, copy this line. That's nice, at least. And then for my font family here, we'll do that. Save that. I don't know why I don't have formatting, as usual. Um, and this should actually be an H2. So let's do that real quick. Uh, let's go over to here. Uh, H2. So we'll change. So we've got the, the title there, and the description is the H2. We'll pop back over to here. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Let's go with that. We're getting in the right direction there. It's not It's not so terrible. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, and then if you want to know that that font actually carried over, you can just go to computed, and you can see here rendered fonts is Poppins. So, uh, you know, it, it'll show Arial or uh, Helvetica or whatever your native operating system is, Ubuntu, if you're Ubuntu or whatever. And uh, that wraps up uh, doing some some basic CSS, um, pretty straightforward, I think. And then we'll we'll carry on into the next one with some um, more interesting ways to tackle this problem. I'll see you then.